Caution! This video is for educational purposes only. We assume no liability for injuries or damage caused by imitating the experiment. Please observe the legal regulations that apply to you when handling chemicals. Synthesis of fluorescein Before starting, 1.66 grams of phthalic acid, 2.2 grams of resorcinol and 2 grams of anhydrazine chloride were weighed out, ground thoroughly in a mortar and filled into a test tube. The zinc chloride serves as a catalyst and dehydrating agent. If phthalic anhydride is used instead of phthalic acid, the amount of zinc chloride can be reduced to 1.5 grams. The mixture in the test tube is heated evenly for a few minutes using a Bunsen burner. A red melt forms. The cotton swab in the mouth of the test tube was used as a precaution to contain any fumes of highly allergenic phthalic anhydride, but did not appear to have been necessary in this case, as only some water vapor was actually formed. After the melt has largely cooled, the test tube was filled halfway with diluted sodium hydroxide solution and heated in a water bath to dissolve the melt. A glass rod was subsequently used to help with this and, after decanting the solution, the remainder of the melt was completely dissolved with more sodium hydroxide solution. The water-soluble sodium salt of fluorescein is formed. The collected and cooled solution is then separated from unreacted unsolubles by simply gravity filtration. Dilute sulfuric acid is then added in portions to the filtrate. A yellow precipitate separates out, which initially dissolves again and again with stirring until the color of the entire solution changes permanently. The sulfuric acid liberates the fluorescein from its sodium salt. In contrast to this, the protonated dye molecule is only very slightly soluble in water and can be precipitated almost quantitatively in this way. To check that the release is complete, the pH value is measured, which should be in the strongly acidic range. The precipitate was then removed by vacuum filtration. Since initially quite a lot of solids went through the qualitative filter paper, the filtration process was repeated twice more until only a clear liquid ran through. The residue was then rinsed three more times with distilled water until the pH of the flow was only neutral to slightly acidic. The yellow residue is a stable lactone form of fluorescein, which rapidly converts to the open carboxylic acid form under standard conditions, forming stable brick red crystals. However, since our product initially began to become soupy in the residual moisture, the decision was made to use our low-budget variant of a steam bath for mild drying. Unfortunately, a vacuum desiccator is not available for such purposes. Finally, we obtained 1.7 gram of a dry red powder of pure fluorescein. This corresponds to a yield of 51.2% compared to the theoretical result which should certainly be better on a larger scale and with a longer reaction time for the melt. And here's the formula for the synthesis. After phthalic anhydride has been formed by heating phthalic acid with the release of water, one molecule with two molecules of resorcinol undergoes a double condensation reaction in the course of which fluorescein is formed. The property that gave the dye its name can best be observed by dropping a few drops of an alkaline fluorescein solution into a cylinder of water that is being exposed to UV light in the dark.
Thanks for watching. Be back for next Sunday's video. If you like today's video, please subscribe to our channel. Ratings and comments are welcome too. If you'd like to see a specific experiment, post it in the comments and we'll see what we can do.